So in this video we're going to be doing projects 89 through 101 and it will be the last video of projects for the SC100 system because it does projects 1 through 101. So the next set of videos in the series will now be focusing on the SC300 system when we start with project 102. Anyway, we're starting with project 89. It is the light controlled LED number 2. And there's what a circuit looks like. And the objective here is to build a circuit that turns the LED on and off using light. Now, in this circuit case, it's very simple. We got our source, our space war IC, then we get our photoresistor on an input, and then our LED on the output. Now, when I plug this in, obviously the LED should come on. And what's happening right now is the space war IC is playing a single sound effect over and over. You can see that because it's solid and then it's flashing, then solid and then flashing, so it's repeating the first trick. If I cover the photoresistor, then it doesn't repeat anymore. It stops. Now if I let light back in, this space where I see starts again, but see now it's got a different sound effect being played out of it that we're seeing on the LED because now it's continuously flashing. And that covered up turns off again if I open it up. Now it's got a different sound effect, but see this time, the sound effect pretty much has the LED completely solid. I can turn it off again. Turn it back on, turn it off, turn it back on. So that's basically what the light controlled LED project is. So that's what Project 89 works as. So let's move on to Project 90. So here we are with Project 90. And it is the touch light. That's what a circuit looks like. And this time the objective is to control the LED using touch or sound. Now in this case it's similar to Project 89, but we took the photoresistor away and replaced it with our whistle chip. So when I power up the circuit, nothing happens on the space where I see. But if I tap the whistle chip, and it's supposed to work. Oops, nothing to something right here. Well, it seems from the way they've got this set up in the project, that it doesn't actually seem to work in this configuration. Because again, we're also going to do Project 91, which is touch sound. And it's just replacing the LED with the speaker. But to see, the thing is, the LED is supposed to light when I tap that. And with Project 91, we replace the speaker on top of the LED. And again, we're supposed to get sound there. But the thing is, I've looked through all the previous projects that have used the whistle chip, and not one of them has used the whistle chip in this configuration with the whistle chip on the ground loop. They've all been on the positive side when used with the alarm IC and music IC, but here with the space war IC it's being used on the ground or negative side, and it's not activating the space war IC. I'm not sure why that is or if that's a typo in the instructions, but because of that, I can't show you Project 90 or 91. Now, if yours happens to work with the whistle chip, then obviously it may just be a fault with my whistle chip, but in the way it's laid out, the circuit doesn't function like that. So we're just going to skip on to Project 92. So here we are with Project number 92, and it is Wacky Sounds. And there's what a circuit looks like. And the objective here is to combine the different sounds of the music and alarm ICs together. So we've got our source, a switch, and then we've got our two outputs here, which is our speaker and our two and a half volt lamp. And we've got our music IC on the bottom, which has both its input and its uh, hold function enabled. So it will repeat over and over. And then on top of that is our alarm IC, and it's got its two inputs here connected together. And of course, its output is then fed to these simultaneously. So when I turn on the circuit, we get the light lighting up. And then we hear the audio from the speaker. And the speaker's audio is coming from both the alarm IC and our music IC, so it's all kind of mixed in there together. 
So that's how project number 92 works. So let's move on to project 93. So here we are with project number 93. And it is wacky your sounds. And of course the objective here is to modify the sound from the previous project. So all we did here was take our two snap off from the input one and two and moved it to the input in, of one and negative there. So when I turn the circuit on this time, see now we get a different sound effect. We still get that music IC sound effect. But see now, we got kind of an ambulance siren effect coming out of the alarm IC at the same time with the music IC. So it just changes the alarm IC's output and it's still being mixed with the music IC. So that's how project number 93 works. So let's move on to project 94. So here we have project number 94 and it's really wacky sounds. And here's what our circuit looks like. And the objective here is again to combine different sound effects. Now this time with our circuit configuration we've got our space for IC and its separate inputs are being driven by our touch and our photo resistor, a slice which turns everything on and off. And our space war IC goes directly to our speaker. Then we get our music IC, which is actually going through the resistor and then into the speaker. So we should expect it to be quieter. But again, it's still mixing the sounds together at the speaker here, but we'll see you hearing this, the space war IC more than our music IC. So I turn our circuit on, I'll just cover the photoresistor up here. See, we hear the music I see, but it's quiet. Now I can press the button over here and get some sound effects from the space for I see. I can uncover the photoresistor, and then I can activate the button here and change the sounds around. kind of mix the sounds all up but of course the music I see will loop over and over but it'll be quieter in comparison to our space where I see so that's how project number 94 works so let's move on to project 95 so here we are with project 95 and it is the noisier space water space war and there's what our circuit looks like. And the objective here is to use water to control the space war I see. Now in this circuit we've got our space war I see connected up. We've got our jumper wires connected to one input and then our push button connected on the other and it all goes out to our speaker. Now if I press the press button, obviously the space war I see will cycle through different sound effects. Now if I take our jumper wires and put them in our cup of water here. See, it also activates the space where I see, and of course, if they do it again, it changes the different sound effects. Now basically, that's how that circuit works. It's able to use the water as a conductor between the two jumpers because it just needs a very, very small amount of current to activate the space for IC and water is very resistant. It does not conduct electricity well. But anyway, that is how project number 95 works. So let's move on to project 96. So here we are with project number 96. And it is the light water space war. And the objective here is the same as the previous project, but this time we're using an LED in place of the speaker. So again, if I press the push button, it lights up our LED and it flickers with the different outputs of the space for I see depending on the sound effect it's playing. And so again, if I take my jumper wires and put them in the water, again it activates our LED. And as I keep doing this, it will cycle through some different sound effects on the space for I see, like for instance the LED is flickering now. That shows how project number 96 works, so let's move on to project 97. So here we are with project 97, and it is the OR AND space war light. And our objective is the same as before, but again we've changed 
our output again and this time we've got the two and a half volt lamp on the output now if I press the push button our lamp will actually be dim see it's not fully you know, illuminated or it's not that bright and if I take my jumper wires and I put them in the water again it will still be dim now if I leave my jumper wires in the water there and press the push button see our light gets brighter and the reason for that is because we're providing two methods of input we've got the water acting as an input and we've got our push button here also acting as another input so we can let some more current flow through the space for IC so that is how project number 97 works so let's move on to project 98 so here we are with project number 98 it is the simple water alarm and there's what our circuit looks like and the objective here is to sound an alarm when water is detected so we have our alarm IC and it's driving our speaker and the whole system is activated via our slide switch and we've got our two jumper wires for where the water is so it's a very simple circuit now when I have the power on and obviously connect our jump wires together <whistles> yeah we get that siren sound that's what the alarm I see would normally sound like but when I put the jumper wires in the water <whistles> see we get that different sound effect out of it and because of the difference in conductance of the water because the water is very resistant it doesn't conduct electricity well so our current going to the alarm I see is vastly affected so that's why we're getting such an odd sound effect out of there but it still works to let you know that there's water present so that's how project number 98 works so let's move on to project 99 here we're going with the same circuit project 99 but now it's the simple salt water alarm so our circuit is going to be the same as before and I'll turn it on and again we get that usual sound as before but I'm going to add some salt to the water and we'll see what happens to the sound Notice how the sound is now sounding like the siren, but not quite exactly like it. See? What's happening is, when I added the salt to the water, I made brine, which is a combination of water and sodium chloride, which is what table salt is. And what I've effectively done is made an electrolyte. By adding salt to the water, it allows it to conduct more electricity. So we've reduced the resistance of the water. The salt allows the carrying of electric current between the two connection points. And so because of that, we get more current through the water, and thus we get a louder sound effect. But also we start to hear that siren sound effect back again, as if we had the jumper wires directly together. So that's how project number 99 works. So let's move on to project 100. So here we are with project 100, and it's the ambulance water alarm. And our objective is the same with detecting water, but this time we can make a connection between the number one input and our negative input terminal here. And we've still got our brine or salt water solution there with our jumper cables immersed in it. Now when I turn the circuit on, See, now we've got something that sounds like an ambulance sound effect. Now notice when I pull these out, it's getting slower until I fully pull them out. But see, if I get them toward the bottom where the salt concentration is, it gets faster and louder. But then I pull them out, and it gets very slow and low. So that's an interesting little experiment effect you can do with that. 
So that's how Project 100 works. So let's look at the last project, Project 101. Metal circuit Project 101 is pretty simple. It's the ambulance contact alarm. And essentially what we're doing here in this project is just seeing if it can tell the difference between the contacts being together, our jumper wires together versus being in the water. So, see, that's what it sounds like normally. It should be fast and loud like that. And when we put them in the water, again, the sound is different because of the difference in conductivity in the water versus directly connecting the snap wires. Now, if I connect them directly together under the water, it doesn't make any difference. So, that is how Project 101 works. And again, this is the end of the video and the last video of projects for the SC100 series.